Well, uh, Gungeon and, well, Ashish, I was going to say Ashish, but he's not on. Um, just seeing that you guys are, are uh, uh, a bit active recently, I've been taking some liberties with some suggestions on uh, issues you might address. So, yeah. so hopefully uh, that's welcome. Uh, sir, I have a question. Uh, sir, I got a mail uh, from your side uh, about uh, asking a company to uh, talk about uh, their service mess. Uh, so, means tell, uh, tell something about that. Yeah, let's put that onto the agenda. That would be great. Um, thanks for bringing that up. I forgot about that. <clears throat> All right. It's three after, which means we will lollygag for about two more minutes. <laughs> While we do that, I'll say, <laughs> well, I'll say that, uh... oh man, boy, I guess it was about 10 years ago. Uh, my eldest boy, he's 11 and what more, one of my younger sisters is hard of hearing. So, um, so among other languages that I do very poorly at, I, I also uh, know American Sign Language. <clears throat> um, and, uh, and so when my son was born, um, we thought, hey, yeah, we should, should we, before he can, you know, vocalize things, words, we should teach him some signs because kids can do that. And in doing that, I thought, well, hey, well, isn't this a great excuse to like finally get into iOS, uh, the iOS SDK, like you know, app development for the iPhone? And so I ended up making a, an app that that teaches people how to sign, you know, different, you know, just basic words, right? And as part of that, I thought, well, you know, it's be professional grade video where I'm signing and I'm wearing the same, uh, you know, same outfit and. As such, <laughs> we had a green screen. This is a really long story. Now I can't see myself. Uh, yeah, really long story. So I ended up tearing apart this, this space that I'm sitting in and grabbed, and I kind of broke down. Anyway, I grabbed this big old green. Uh, yeah. Green blanket. So we're going <clears> to <throat> we're going to have some fun. Um, it's just a shame that meet google meet doesn't actually you know uh do the same things that zoom does with green screens and having fun so anyway good that was the perfect amount of lollygagging it's five after it's june the 5th friday uh, we've got uh, a collection of you on the call probably a few others joining let's get going we've got meeting minutes in the link reminder we, we record these meetings put them out on youtube uh, for you to enjoy over and over and over again. Let me share my, share the meeting minutes and please pop your name in if you're here. Also, uh, if you have a topic, please pop, pop that in as well. Uh, for my part, it's rare, but today I didn't get time to kind of list out various announcements that are happening in the community. And so um, we, we had a lot of announcements to share from the week prior. Probably the one that's kind of, it's not an announcement as much as just a related and relevant happening. Um, that I'll list here and that's that for those of you that are familiar with um, DataWire's Ambassador project, the um, you know modern cloud native API gateway built on top of Envoy, it is uh, up for review and donation to the CNCF as an incubation level project. So we just um, 
sat with that team yesterday and they gave a presentation on ambassador and the community and and um and occasionally seeing those reviews is a good reminder or a good um reference point for just how well we're doing in this community <laughs> um so okay a anyone else have relevant news topics things things that others might be interested in just sort of related <clears throat> Riley, it's time. Uh, one good uh, one announcement from other. I think Linode Kubernetes engine has just arrived. So it's particularly a very easy way. Is uh, we have talked about EKS, AKS, and uh, GKE. So LKE is a very light, very easy to manage that. So it's a part of. Uh, uh, and uh, I think Nigel Porton has some reviews on that so but in the next week so anybody interesting in that i can share the link with them so it's a very i think it's a very good news in the kubernetes world okay yeah interesting um did am i capturing it correctly do you think that it kind of falls into the same category as k3s and micro k and kind and that uh, this is uh, I get, you know, it's not kind, but it's um, intended to be small and lightweight. Is, is that right? Uh, yeah, yes, I think uh, it's, it's a, uh, I think uh, uh, right now, I think they had kind to do the things that are very complicated in other cloud providers and other Kubernetes engine. So they have shift and lift everything so that people can easily engage with the Kubernetes. Because in the world of Kubernetes, you have to know plenty of the stuff, ingress, and there's a very whole kind of objects in there. So they kind of abstracted away everything from us and kind of do a very easy and smooth experience for the user. So I think they kind of uh, easy to manage and easy to engage people with the Kubernetes world. That's a theme that I have seen in the, uh, in the news uh, in their channel and also in the uh, Twitter and also the blog posts. Oh, interesting. Anybody else um, had a chance to look at Linode Kubernetes engine? Um, another note is sort of somewhat related. Um, considering our good friends um, Chaim and, and Octarine are being uh, ushered into VMware, there's a, um, another recent um, impending VMware acquisition. Um, Chaim, did that hit your radar? I, one of my former colleagues, he's, his company's going in. Uh, yes, uh, this one is uh, another security, I'm, I'm guessing, we're talking about the recent uh, acquisition of the security BU, uh, the network security BU. Could be. I did it, it. I just saw the announcement this morning, and the company name starts with an L. <laughs> yeah. Um, let me. Lightfoot, maybe. Um. Just give me a second. I, I just read uh, it yesterday, so it's it's. Uh, adjacent business unit, we have our security business unit, which is based on the, the carbon black acquisition. And then uh, we have the network security BU. So last line was the company that was acquired by the network security BU. Um, and uh, they are doing uh, deep packet inspection uh and advanced uh threat detection uh, and then yeah i guess if you're a little bit familiar the a question or two if i might so the the, the advanced threat or the dpi and, and the advanced threat detection that they're doing is is that a bit more of the uh of the bare metal land or like our IaaS world or 
No, so they're they're definitely targeting the the cloud. Oh, okay. Uh, okay. And you, environment. Do you consider that that it would that tech would be folded into the uh, carbon black? So not the carbon black. No, they are uh, they are going to be integrated into the NSX. Hmm. Uh, set of products and perhaps to the Tanzu service mesh, which is also uh, provided by the network security uh, business unit. Okay. Well, okay. well that, that turned out to be a more interesting um, topic than I, than I thought. I'll have to, I'll have to um, poke one or two people at last lines and, uh, see how real of a possibility they think that this this is tanzu service mesh as a point of interest just what else what else is uh other than riots protests and free tvs i guess like what, what other relevant uh nerdy topics do you guys have to share Not like a news or something, but um, how is the relation with Linux Academy? They have nice classes and mesh free trainings are not there. So uh, I would love to, to, to see some, since there are so many good workshops you have, not you have, that I found that are in the community. And also a, a nice thing, um, now I don't know exactly, because I also have a paid version, but even on the free, you can um, have, for instance, one or three instances in AWS, and uh, yeah, they, they kind of stay alive for one week or something like that. And if you have the paid version, so it's also like, um, development community or alpha today i'm really bad on on speaking but the thing is that uh, you can have um, servers there online so that can also be used for demo stuff that's different thing related they have they give you instances in aws and so on it, interesting I mean, are those short-lived instances that's the thing I don't know to, to tell you exactly because I have a paid instance and it, uh, it, I think it's valid one week and then you, so you can always regenerate it. I can have like three of them or more, I don't know, or 11. I have to, I have to look. I remember because I received the mail today, you didn't enter for, uh, for one week and uh, we are going to delete it. But that's the thing. It's a it's it's a cool thing. Uh, yeah, I also had, I also had it for free, but I don't know for free how uh, how long was it or it, if it was only one serv server or something like that. But otherwise, the subscription is pretty cheap. And uh, you might uh, you you might have you might make a partnership with them in order to have something um, for free or. Does it make sense what I'm speaking or? Yeah, uh, yeah. Oh, yeah, it absolutely does. It's, uh, it is out of my league and I'm saying things that are not my, my concerns. You can always stop me or say, let's continue and. No, no, it's, it's um, highly relevant. Um, we, well, a couple of quick examples are that we spend some time doing that through the O'Reilly platform and that's, um, and that's time well spent. Um, uh, and that there have been some in the community that have asked us to go put it on their platforms that aren't, that I don't know that many of you necessarily are aware of. Um, some of you actually might be, because I think one of the platforms is prominent in, in India. Um, but it, so has the Linux Foundation asked us to create a course um, 
And so has a cloud guru actually been after us for a while. Um, yeah, now I remember why, because I had in the last four months, I paid to the Google cloud some money, which I wasn't aware because I didn't check the, the bill. <laughs> so it kind of pissed me off. <laughs> yeah. So, yeah, no, that's a great, yeah. Um, thanks for that note. That's a, no, and no. the resources are, are much more and are, are like free versus the one from that I had on the Google Cloud, which at, at the beginning were free resources. But at one point, either November or uh, February, they decided it's not free anymore. And so, and yeah, I mean, I yeah, it was like something with uh, notes with Kubernetes and things like that. From free resources at one point. Oh, gotcha. Yeah. Um, actually, actually, I'll say one other thing on that topic, and that's something that we've described a little bit here in on these calls in the past, and that is that, uh, well, well, a couple of things. One is to the it is in part to the initial goal of Meshery, which was to help educate people about service meshes. And Meshery continues to be um, helpful in that regard. There are more things to be done to it to make it more helpful uh, for learning. Um, the other thing that's probably noteworthy here is that we were, we've, con we've considered, um, well, we're actually making a sample app right now for uh, SMI conformance or service mesh interface conformance. And that sample app will be used to do SMI conformance testing, but but can also be used to help people learn uh, the functionality of a service mesh. And I think I lost my original point. I was going to say something about, uh, but anyway, irrespective, like that, that's this this suggestion. This is certainly um, one of the mesh purposes to also be a learning platform. Yeah, yeah, it's really good. Um, and actually, I'm hopeful that there's a few of you, uh, uh, O'Reilly in specific, just that one platform is asking a lot of us, or I think a lot of us, that uh, they're asking for a couple of books right now, um, another one after those. They're asking for more than the training that we're doing right now. So they're asking for like th three different trainings and then maybe some shorter labs and just um, their... Uh, they're not being shy <laughs> with their asks. And so um, I'm really pleased about that because I consider that it opens up opportunity for those that are interested in this community to go do it um, and to go use Meshery or uh, to, to teach people. Um, and so, so good. I, I know that some of you have signaled your interest in some of those um, activities. And so I will be following up for sure. Okay, fair enough. Any other announcements? Sorry, I was just prepping my demo <laughs> and I didn't saw uh, what was saying about uh, the, the Linode or Linode uh, LKE. Uh, indeed, Nigel will do that uh, today's, I think, or over today's. Uh, so I will not repeat what Sam said. However, it's not uh, MicroKates or K3S. It's uh, JKE, uh, PKS, AKS, whatever competitor. So I put the link. So you you have the master for free, but then the workers uh, run on the Linux or Linux uh, clouds. So everything is there. Yeah, interesting. Yeah. Well, so it's uh, think about it like uh, I don't know if Nigel went really ahead. I don't know if it's uh, not a concurrent, but something in line with his MSB um, dot com uh, website that he was also uh, like helping. So um, I don't know, but it seems more like a GKE and uh, AKS kind of stuff. Yeah, you know, I, um, I'll poke I'll poke at Chaim and say. That sound that managed control plane sounds like a very familiar go to market. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> and it's uh, I consider it's a it's a great route to market. I mean, um, 
it it, it takes it does kind of the hard bit for the customer um, while enabling a bit of continuous delivery for the customer if you're able to if you're managing half of the half of what's going on and you're able to upgrade it, I guess Heim it's like maybe a good question for you um, did, did was it ever the case that uh, there were active active users of the managed control plane that while they did have workloads on-prem um, that you were upgrading the control plane um, in flight? Of course, yeah. of course. And how, how did you, and, you know, and the coordination of that, was that, was that you were just kind of coordinating an, an update of, um, of the bits that you had on-prem as well? concurrently yeah. but uh, many of, of the features don't don't really require uh, a data plane upgrade and you can just do more with the information you get from the data plane uh, by upgrading the control plane and then uh, whenever the user is ready to uh, upgrade their their data plane they can do that independently yeah the the link here that, that muno has shared i think um is that's is to nigel polton's training on lke uh, and so that might be worth checking out yeah so that one was same but yeah it's uh, i think it was on uh, on linkedin he, he, he put it but same put the, the right uh, link. It's like a today's free workshop or something like that. The link below, that's the one that states what LKE is. Oh, okay. Yeah, this one. Okay. Oh, very good. All right, last last announcement, and that is that, um, again, I, I didn't have time to prep today's call. So we, we've had any number of new community members um, joining this last week, which, uh, which is great. Um, uh, uh, some some users, some would be contributors, and uh, it's always nice to acknowledge those folks. And as part of that, it's my duty to welcome Lewis. Uh, Lewis, how how are you? Thanks for joining. Good, uh, glad to join. I'm happy to to kind of dig deeper into the code. I'm still kind of getting self associated with the company itself and just what will be happening moving forward. Yeah. Uh, thanks to Natish for actually pointing this out and because I did need something new to kind of keep me from just doing what I do at work, work and spread into some new tech. Yeah, very good. Uh, we, we may have saved your, your wrists for, or Natish might have saved your wrists from, from some slits, it sounds like. I mean, uh... I, at least, I don't know if it gets that bad for you, but that's kind of how it gets for me. Yeah, it gets it gets to the point where it feels like I'm solving the same problem, but adding a space somewhere different. So, yeah. <laughs> nice. All right, very good. Well, uh, just to help folks get a little more familiarized with you, uh, uh, what, how would you characterize your focus or kind of the 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 tech or the uh, the the role or the function or the the thing that you do or spend most time on. So currently, the majority of my time is spent in tool creation. So I, I'm trying to figure out how to word this properly. I was not expecting this question, <laughs> but it's mainly in tool creation focused around artificial intelligence. With some, that's a really crappy term but it's in natural language processing models and intent processing. Uh, but overall, I kind of like digging into multiple things. A lot of my side projects are database related. Uh, and I have a, based on my previous, previous company, which Natish and I worked at, I have a real deep love hate relationship with security. Uh, Toolkit for it is uh, mainly Python at the moment, but I'm 
pretty fluent in Node, Python. Uh, I'm okay in Go, not as good as Natish. I'm hyping him up a little bit more. But front end, back end, and data management would be the focuses. Oh, yeah, okay. Oh, interesting. Last question, if I, if I might pry. The use case for, or the use cases that you're chasing down with your NLP work, um, what, what does that look like? So the main points that the company's pushing for this is the work I do at work work. The main points that the company's pushing for is lessening the the need for humans for human interactions whenever you're speaking to whenever you call a call center and you get that really horrible automated little voice thing. Yeah. Uh, we try to make it so that you can speak to it naturally. So it's natural interactions instead of guided yes no's and putting a number. So you can just say whatever you'd want to say. I don't know if I can actually divulge in any of the companies that we work with. But let's just say because of the whole COVID thing and the human aspect of the field going down, it it was a deep ramp up to kind of work within the scale of the product because the toolkits that I build went from being used by maybe 30 people per week to about 100 in a day. So, yeah, so scale scale is also something that I'm – consistently striving to keep moving forward yeah. but those are the main points when it comes to the nlp for it so we handle the creation of the models that are actually used to deal with that processing got it okay oh cool nice there's a there's a gal um nipur uh, who's in the community um she actually plays a role in the community doing a few things one of those is is being a, a mesh mate uh being a uh, an onboarding partner for folks that are new in the community. And anyway, I mentioned her mostly because she too has been, um, actually she's actively working on an NLP project right now. So anyway, well, welcome Lewis. Uh, it's good to have you. Thank you. Glad to be here. All right. Luis, well, Luis, do you speak Spanish or Portuguese? I'm Spanish. I'm Haitian and Dominican. What? I'm Haitian and Dominican, mixed. I didn't understand the first word. Dominic, I don't... Haitian. So, yeah, I'm, I'm Spanish. Half Spanish. Oh, Haiti. Haitian. Yeah. <laughs> no, I, it, it, it was after the name. I was sure that... Uh, but I was thinking on something more exotic, not Spanish. <laughs> 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 but, yeah, it's okay. Uh, uh, it's nice. I also speak Spanish. Oh, okay. Well, bueno, con Celta. Mucho gusto. And my Go language is also really down level, so. <laughs> yeah, Natish has been trying to convert me to the cult for, for about two years now. He almost got me to go to GoCon. I don't know if he went Go for a Con or Go. I don't even remember the name for it. But yeah, I'm not. I'm not there yet. <laughs> yep, I did. <laughs> um, oh, nice. Uh, Try to convince more people. I also want to be convinced. <laughs> so, okay, I, I, I'm, say, I'm saying stupid things because for me it's more it's uh, in the afternoon Friday. <laughs> uh, nice to have you on board, Liz. Thank you. Oh, very good. Um, well, of the two the two topics that we've got listed currently, um, the, the first of which um, Gunjan was going to or is going to look into a little bit, um, I we had just noticed that it looked like there was uh, a medical centric uh, service mesh that had entered into the landscape into the ecosystem called Hub Bucket, um, and I think that their website is hubbucket.xyz but they have an invalid certificate on the site. So, um, so, so visitor beware, I guess. Um, and so as part of maintaining the service mesh uh, landscape, you know, we generally try to amass you know, a collection of all of the service meshes out there. And so Gungeon was of the top of this topic, I 
your question was just going to be to clarify um, the ask about how to how to reach out and engage with them. Uh, yes, yeah, sir. Okay. Yeah. Uh, in 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 just a few words, it, it is it is essentially that that if you can find a way of of contacting them to ask them if they're interested in having Hub Bucket represented on the service mesh landscape and just kind of inviting them to come make a pull request, inviting them to come add themselves to the list. Okay. Okay. Sir. Uh, are they on the CNCF landscape? No. Uh, I, I, well, or I say no offhandedly because, because I can't imagine that they are. Uh, but no, rather the um, layer five service mesh landscape is uh, what Gunjan is going to go um, ask them if they're interested in being on. Okay. That's cool. Nice. Uh, any other comments on this? Gunjan, did that answer your question? Uh, okay, sir. I will uh, try to contact with them and I'll get back to you. Nice. Yep. If, if it, uh, yep. Grab me if I can help. Yes, sure, sir. Um, next up, um, Nuno, I won't even introduce the topic, um, but let you do that. <laughs> All right. So uh, over the, the past days, if not weeks, I always add some um, requests to, to say like, OK, uh, we are on Windows and we want maybe to um, to let's say develop directly from PowerShell and from Windows, no WSL attached, which pains me by the way, but okay, I can get some people don't want WSL on it or cannot have WSL on it. So um, since build, since uh, three weeks, one month now already, um, Microsoft announced the, the Winget uh, package manager for Windows. So uh, it's uh, a competitor, uh, or wannabe competitor for now of uh, Chocolatey for the ones who know that or Scoop. Uh, but the strength here is that uh, they have a YAML type of manifest file that can tell, okay, how to install the your tool. Okay, so you have normally your setup uh, exe on maybe on GitHub or somewhere else, and this manifest will be in the WinGet repository, and that will directly link to it. So uh, let's do maybe directly a, a demo quickly, if you don't mind. If I can just, I will share my full screen because it's uh, easier. Okay. Here we go. All right. So you should be able to see my command line, right? With the nice logo. There it is, yeah. OK. So uh, the tool, OK, sorry. First of all, maybe let's do here and let's go here. The tool is called Winget. So if you type Winget on uh, Google, uh, you will see uh, when get CLI should be the, the first one to, to come. And here on release, you have the, the package, the bundle. Once you install it, uh, its its name is really CLI. So that's what it is. So here you will have the winget commands that you can run. And for now, it's quite, uh, let's say, easy to get your head around. Uh, mainly to install, you will use the search, like a normal app get, if you want, or brew, and install. OK, so here to have the now the meshery. Now, OK, that's the, the focus for now. So I make my demos short. I will directly focus on meshery. So for uh, getting ready with meshery, and being able to compile it uh, directly from PowerShell, we will need uh, the Git. So you will do like, uh, if you do like winget install Git, it will do like a search here. And then it will tell you like, OK, that's many of them. So to install Git, and that's the only one, actually, uh, if you want the Git command line, or uh, maybe better, you can now have the uh, GitHub desktop directly. OK, so looks like that. So it's quite nice. Uh, I like it 
quite a lot, but anyway. So here, once you install this one here, Gits, which I did already, so you will be able to type Git and now you have Git on PowerShell, okay, or Windows side. Then uh, the next one, and now I will just do search because I already pre-installed it. If I just do make, for example, if I search make, now I have this GNUIN32 make for Windows, okay? That will be the same. So here, if I just copy it, I think it's quite fast, so I will just show you. Even though if I installed it already, uh, that's okay. It will search for it. As you can see, it goes directly to somewhere where the make installer is based on the GNUIN uh, tools. Uh, okay, might take more, maybe more time than I expected. Maybe why? Because I'm sharing. But anyway, okay, now here we go. So while it, it downloads it, so you do the make and again, you will do go uh, afterwards. So here you can see that make uh, run the uh, installer automatically and now if I just do make uh, I have like again uh, okay didn't find anything that's normal finally like I said you can do the same okay you get the, you you get the pitch right so if I just search go I have my goal link here I can install go okay I have already it so now I will just uh, I did it before but I will clone meshery thanks to git now so it will be quite fast hopefully again all right and now i can move into meshery ctl because that's where uh, the questions arise okay uh here if i do a deer you can see that i have like the make file so i can do a cat in uh, powershell for the ones who didn't know um can do a cat and here uh normally i have uh for win okay that will do a go build of meshery ctl directly okay so if i do a make i could do i could run of course uh let's say go the, the go command directly right but uh, as we are doing it so uh let's say the we the linux way on windows just to show you that it's possible so if i do a make for win here we go, and now I can do uh, meshery ctlxe and uh, system status, for example. There's nothing running, and if I do a system start, I have normally already my, uh, I pulled it before, I'm cheating. That looks, and that looks thanks to cool. the work, here we go. So we have here, you can see that I'm running on Docker desktop. For the ones who know now, uh, we have the nice command docker context ls, and you can see my Kubernetes endpoints is this one. And again, remember that meshery basic runs on Docker still, right? So if I do a Docker PS, I have here my containers, but it will it will be attached now to my uh, Docker desktop. And if I ping it, yeah, that's. Uh, that's uh, that's again here it's okay that's not you at all it's really me who has uh oh no here we go so okay sorry i did it fast so on upload config uh here i'm on my user okay and dot cube and here you can see the config file that uh, docker desktop actually creates for you and inside you can see forget micro case for now but you can see docker desktop and uh yeah other contexts if you have it of uh, kubernetes but now i can ping it so i can go back clicking here and just a small uh we saw that with lee but just a small cache issue so here if i refresh here we go and now i can ping them also and that's it you have meshery ready for development on windows then um no, no, was it just the was it just meshery ctl that was built i just built me a uh, meshery ctl because i went here directly i went to the meshery meshery ctl and meshery for uh, for win i don't know if uh, something else 
was made for Windows, but it was I just to create the. Uh, for meshery, uh, like running on the Windows, uh, yeah, I mean, we don't have to put the meshery CTL command itself. We just go directly to the uh, to the meshery CTL uh, folder and we are able to use it. Okay. So here is like if you have a make file, uh, I'm not sure meshery has a. Uh, 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 no, sorry, it's not that's what I want. It's like make file. Yeah, and a... yeah, not sure it has a for win or something like that. I never really, let's say, built meshery. Right. It will run Docker and everything. Yeah. So uh, right. if uh, yeah. the the make uh, there's a make run hyphen local that I can't imagine. This one here. Okay. It, maybe it'll work because it's we're just going to. Okay. Want to try? Let's do. Um, Community call, right? <laughs> right. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we're we're all yeah. So yeah. This is a safe zone. We're. Uh... Okay. Uh, I will have a look, but. Uh... Those backslashes can't be, or those four. What is the backslashes can't be doing us any favors. Backslash. No, yeah, because in yeah, true. That's because in PowerShell is like uh, the back tick, the um, to the next line. So <laughs> if I do something like that here, and then I back tick, if I press enter now, you see I am entering now the like uh, a normal uh, normal shell, and if I keep the the backslash though. It will complain. I mean, it's uh, enter, and we never. So here, the make run local. If you just replace the backslash or make win run local or run local win, I don't know. Then you might be able to, uh, because now, yeah, it will not uh, die. It will not do the adapters. No, nothing. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> well. Um... VJ is going to watch this recording for sure. So. I, I went pretty fast, but uh, anyway, you can just tag me on Slack. Uh, I've been pretty busy, as Lee, knee, uh, uh, as Lee knows. Uh, but uh, yeah, just tag me on Slack, and I will uh, gladly help you. Nice. Nice. OK. Oh, good. Any other comments for Nuno? Winget. Huh. Yeah. Work with Windows 10 Home, or is it still limited to the? Uh... Good question. So uh, since the version 2004, so I'm here on my Windows 2000 Pro, or sorry, to Windows 10 Pro, sorry, 2004 edition. So, okay. uh, but Windows Home can run uh docker using however wsl so that's the mandatory feature okay you you cannot run docker desktop without uh wsl2 on uh windows home home yeah yeah oh good any other comments for nuno nice I, uh, I, in some respects, I'm, I'm surprised that we've gotten as far as we have on, on Windows, like of the things that you, you were demoing, like it just there hadn't been a lot of considerations uh, made, but. Um, yeah, it's, it's, the, it's the new platform. Come on. It's, uh, it will stall every Mac developer in the world, right? <laughs> That's the goal. <laughs> yeah. It's a pretty, yeah. Uh, and uh, how's your experience on window terminal uh i'm using it daily now like when i do all my demos and everything i can put some uh, pictures i can uh, i can tab i can uh, duplicate tabs uh sorry it was not based uh, to do that i will just share just the terminal right now uh why doesn't 
okay doesn't want it sorry i will just quickly then the screen again it will be really fast can you see it again yeah okay so here uh first of all you have like uh shortcuts right so if i want to run ubuntu i could just let's say Control shift 5 and it goes my tab on ubuntu directly uh, then i'll shift d it's like duplicating it okay Control shift w it's uh you can close it and then you can like uh, uh it's like alt shift minus for always going uh let's say uh horizontal uh breaks or the i think it's plus sign the plus alt shift plus and then you can like do that but yeah finally uh now i don't remember but alt shift u no control shift u either i don't remember but uh in my settings you can set your own uh split planes yeah okay i i didn't do it but uh, you can do like, um, sorry, let me do control plus. Here you go. You can do your own commands, okay, for splitting panes or doing maybe other things. So, uh, yeah, it's, uh, I mean, it's getting there really. And when you have like a, a long, uh, I don't know, like uh, if I go back, then I do a deer, um, several deers, let's say. Okay, now I can do Control F. Oh, it doesn't work. Okay, Control Shift F. Sorry, and now if I search for Meshri CTL, I can see you see my mouse here moving right. So you can you can search in the in the terminal directly. So yeah, that's uh, that's quite that's quite. I mean, that's uh, like if you compare to the. Let me just run an Ubuntu like that. Uh, if you compare to these. <laughs> If let's say you want to zoom, look, the zooming is like the, the window itself and uh, no picture, but okay, that's just for the fun of it. But uh, I mean, that's, uh, we, we got finally a shell. So definitely install it. And of course, to install it, install, win get install, and you can go terminal directly. And uh, it will tell you which one do you want to, to install and once you choose it you can simply install with winget from the terminal the terminal which is kind of cool but quite a lot of inception here uh, sorry yeah. I, you know i really like the microsoft approach of uh, doing that so we have a powershell everything in the one separate window really like that i uh, also you have used the uh, vs code extension for debugging because we have running the VS code as a UI in the windows and their terminal in the Linux environment. And that's a really like about it. That's a tremendous uh, uh, extension. I like, how your experience for that? Have you tried the machine using that? I'm no developer. <laughs> I will just stop there. But yeah, I'm, I'm using VS code uh, with WSL2, but there's WSL code also with Docker directly. So, uh, uh, but that's the same experience there as in uh, in Mac and uh, Linux. Simply that they have this, uh, like you said, the the VS Code UI is Windows based, and then you can have Meshri running on WSL2, for example, if you want to stay on the Linux side of things, and uh, w, uh, VS Code knows the path and everything of uh, WSL2. So yeah, definitely it's. Uh, Great tools, integrations. Uh, no, no, I, I'm also thinking about uh, could we go for a U, YouTube webinar for uh, how to run Mishri using WC, WSL and using all kind of that. I think we can we do that for, for a YouTube series. I that's that would be a great. Even even people people can finally just type search on the YouTube and that can go with that. Yeah, definitely. Again, I'm I mean, very uh, specialized. Yeah, sorry. I'm very specialized on, uh, let's say, the installation part and everything. So then I always, uh, let's say, fall back to Lee uh, when it comes for the performance, really, like the performance aspect then uh, of the of the 
the service meshes and everything. So, but yeah, definitely, if you want to to do just something, uh, again, I'm just working on not at all these. So, but uh, outside my work hours, uh, definitely, we can uh, set uh, uh, some like uh, a, a small series. That's what I'm doing uh, with the friends now uh, for Azure Azure .tar, But yeah, gladly. Nice. All right. Um, we have uh, eight minutes left. Shivai, you wanted to highlight the notion that uh, you want to highlight this real quick. Yeah. Uh, just, I mean, I'll not take more than 30, 40 seconds. I was just saying that, uh, like, we have we have been using Slack for a lot of of the discussions, but uh, you know, just to onboard more people who want to join as developers, we can. And create more and more discussion tags uh, with regards to say the UI to uh, the metric CD for the CI CD workflow. Uh, you know, basically just create those, and uh, so that we can sort of you know promote this uh, discussions and just see if it's working out great. Otherwise, we can continue to use Slack because you know it's something that uh, we got uh, like one of the early access to discussions. So I mean, I'm just uh, sort of. Uh, thinking because uh, it allows us to like you know link any issue any uh, pull request from github itself so it becomes you know sort of easier to uh, also use this uh, i mean like to uh, i mean to to be able to adapt to you know just using one platform itself for discussing say on any of the potential bugs that might be there or some feature requests with regards to any pull request or to the issue, uh, so having that using GitHub, uh, you know, discussions uh, reduces that, uh, like you know, that medium of say Slack that we are using. So it uh, basically removing one of the layers from from that. So just to have it, like you know, sort of a, uh, like, I would say, say we can try this out as a, you know, like just for a practice, and if it works out great, then that's fine. Otherwise, we can continue with Slack. Yeah, we we won't we won't get rid of Slack. It'll it'll. Um, uh, that said, there are, there it is a free Slack, and so there's a lack of history at some point, and there's it's natural for a lot of people to initiate a private conversation to get a sense of something, and for the conversation to sort of ensue from there. Um, while the first question or the first interaction of that private conversation is maybe maybe appropriate or maybe just more comfortable to have privately, uh, as the conversation unfolds, to Shavai's point, many of the, most of the rest of the community would have benefited from that conversation, and so the lack of posterity and the um, and the lack of transparency for some of those conversations hurts. Um, bringing in another mechanism another venue for conversation can be can also have the adverse effect of people being upset that they they didn't know that or they didn't see it and they, they feel like they've got to go check the mailing list check slack check the um but but uh, shivai did us a, a solid by getting um this new functionality of github enabled for the layer 5 io org and onto the meshery repo and so um, there's a ton of merit to this. I, I from just offhandedly for my part, I'll, I'll, I'll weigh in with my perspective, but, but mine is one of, one of many, obviously on, on the call. And that is, there's a number of things that are likely to, or that I think that some of these discussions here, um, good topic, or I'm sorry, good, um, topics that make for good discussions here are those that can be are likely to become actionable or are potentially like an action item that sh maybe should turn into an issue, but there's some amount of ambiguity about the approach to it initially. And, and that this format can be a bit easier maybe to digest than a long comment history on an issue that was initially described with a certain description, but that description is maybe totally different from what it it currently, you know, what it ended up being that the short of what I'm saying is I think that there is a place for these discussions. I think that, that we should give it a go. 
So anyway, I'm going to I'm going to move on without uh, soliciting further comment uh, because we have two other items to to highlight. Um, one is that there's a convenience operator, if you will, that <clears throat> um, Kanishkar has recently worked on. So those of you that have used Meshery in um, context with EKS or GKE or AKS, that you you occasionally stumble on the the, the fact that um, Meshery's sort of uh, first class experience with Docker Desktop um, leaves you wanting when you try to use Meshery with with a, an EK a managed Kubernetes, and that's in part by the way in which Meshery needs to authenticate to that cloud provider and, um, you know, get, authenticate and then get and, and be authorized to, to interface with the managed Kubernetes system. And so Kanish Card worked on a command here recently that I think we would do well to collectively consider its structure and whether or not this is the best structure or not. But I think he has support for GKE and EKS right now to basically go out to that provider and uh, configure the your cube config you grab grab and configure a cube config locally that Meshery can use to interface with that provider. So I, I won't I won't allow for comments right right there just or, because we have two minutes left. And I want to so please weigh in on that and th think about the command structure because um, Nuno a power user like Nuno who has been using. Um, who has gotten familiar with the structure of these commands and, and that they've been that same way for some time. When we go to change them, and, and as we recently have brought forth the system command, and, and, uh, we've, we've messed with the, the flow and the way in which people normally interact with Meshery CTL. So we want to make some of these, we want to be considerate and make these changes and get it right the first time, I think is what I'm trying to say. So if you have an opinion on these, please bring that opinion to this doc, the Meshery CLI design doc. Last thing I'll show in the, this last minute is that we've had a longstanding issue with the CPX adapter and uh, Kush and Naveen and Diraj and I got together and worked, worked through those bugs. So now the, the CPX adapter is working fine. The, we've got the appropriate logo here. We've got the um, nice. That's such a pretty logo. We've got the the appropriate logo here. Um, you're now able to. We actually are calling it the right thing, not just Citrix. We're calling it, and we're not calling it CPX. We're calling it Citrix Service Mesh. That's the right thing. That anyway, a bunch of bugs were fixed, um, including bugs that were play, plaguing um, the deployment of of the system itself. So pl please go try it because we're about to make that. Uh, the the dot four release, the zero dot four release, and it would be good if we could have this adapter not as beta, but as stable. So if you haven't, so so go try this one. It should be really easy for any of you to try. See if you get um, an Istio fla or a Citrix flavored Istio stood up. Okay. Top of the hour. Final comments from anyone. Nice. All right, let's end on time. It's good. Good to see you all. Thanks. All right. Yeah. All right. Okay. T see you later, Heim. Um, thanks for coming, Liz. All right. Thanks. Bye bye. Yeah. Bye, Dina. Bye, guys. Bye, Phil. Oh, bye, everyone. Yeah. Bye. <laughs>